Bact not dead on arrival after all. Apparently the futures trading on Bact is doing amazingly well. And on top of that they announced a groundbreaking move that could remove important roadblocks for institutional money and even eventually an ETF approval. Let's look into all that Bact is up to lately. Hello, Adrian here for Bitcoin for Beginners. In this series, What's Up with Bitcoin, we will talk about all things Bitcoin and the latest news. In this second episode of Season 1, developments around BACT are central, being the talk of the town. After the launch of BACT late September and its extremely low trading volumes for the futures in the first days of trading, many were mocking the project for becoming a failure. But were these doom and gloomers too early to judge? Looks like they are, Bact has recently broken its previous trading volume record with a volume that is about 20 times more than on its first day. They also announced they will be expanding into options trading, custody and their payments network rollout. Time for a Bact update and to look at the implications for Bitcoin adoption, institutional money as well as consumers. First of all, if you don't yet know what Bact exactly is, please watch our Bact for Dummies explainer, which we will link in the description and at the end of this video. I will give you a short recap as a reminder for those that are aware of the Bact project. Bact is a venture by ICE, which is the parent company of the New York Stock Exchange. Bact aims to be a platform that can be sort of a regulated second layer for Bitcoin that could improve onboarding of institutional investors, merchants and consumers. So, BACT is not only futures trading, but supposed to become an entire Bitcoin ecosystem within a regulated framework that is acceptable for financial institutions and merchants to offer services that can make it attractive for consumers to use Bitcoin, especially within their ecosystem. BACT wants to achieve more Bitcoin adoption by offering physically delivered futures in the form of daily and monthly expiring contracts, asset custody in their digital warehouse, both of these are aimed at getting institutional investors into Bitcoin. They also introduce a payment gateway including software solutions, wallets and points of sales, and partnerships such as with Starbucks and Microsoft. The payment gateway and partnerships are aimed to attract merchants and consumers to the platform. Because ICE is a well-established and trusted company in the financial sector, they expect that institutional money and merchants are more comfortable to enter the Bitcoin space through their platform. At least that is the vision. Before we continue, if you like the content of this series, you can like this video and additionally subscribe to our channel to be updated when we release the other episodes of this series season. The first important step on Beck's roadmap was the launch of physically settled futures trading, which was a slightly different product than the existing future contracts offered by CME. If you compare Beck to CME futures, CME futures are cash settled versus Beck futures that are physically settled. The difference here is that at CME on the expiry date of the contracts, no actual Bitcoin has to be delivered, only the price difference between the contract and the Bitcoin price will be settled in USD. On the other hand, the back futures require actual delivery of Bitcoin on expiry, which means that actual Bitcoin has to be bought and sold for the backed futures. CME offers leverage on their futures contracts, Bact explicitly doesn't offer leverage because they want to prevent the creation of paper Bitcoin as much as possible, and paper Bitcoin meaning the trading of Bitcoin that is not actually backed by real Bitcoin. CME has only monthly expiring futures, while Bact initially only plans to launch daily expiring contracts, but later added monthly contracts as well for the launch. Because the launch date was announced earlier but was still pending the approval process with regulators, the launch of back futures trading was delayed multiple times and that had some speculators losing excitement for the project. Many people also had high expectations of an immediate inflow of large sums of institutional money and consequently expected a price surge for Bitcoin itself, because of the belief that real Bitcoin have to be bought for the trading on backed. After the futures trading finally got approved by regulators, on September the 23rd, monthly and daily expiring futures were launched and opened for trading. Results on the very first day, only 71 Bitcoin volume for monthly futures, which is about $700,000, and just one Bitcoin volume for daily futures. Compared to the CME Bitcoin futures on their first day of trading in 2017, a much more successful, decent, almost 5,300 Bitcoin trading volume. To be fair, the launch of CME futures did happen in a smoking hot bull market, where overall trading volume and excitement for Bitcoin was much higher. Bact opened their trading in a still quite bearish market environment. However, many viewed the Bact launch still as very disappointing and a potential failure. With this kind of volume and underwhelming activity, they did not expect institutions entering the Bact platform. On a side note, remarkably one of the toughest setbacks in the Bitcoin price in 2019 happened exactly in the days since the launch of Bact Futures trading. 
whether that is a result of loss of confidence in the back trading and the expected inflow of institutional money or a pure coincidence is perhaps hard to accurately identify. Fast forward to this month. What is now the current status of the backed futures market? On October 25th, the previous highest daily volume on monthly futures was $10 million, which was already a very significant increase since the first week. On November 8th, however, trading volume already set a new record of even $15 million. That meant that trading already increased more than 20 times in volume compared to the first day. If we compare it to CME's current futures trading volume of $700 million, though it being in operation for two years, Back's volume is still small but undoubtedly rapidly increasing. Daily futures unfortunately are not gaining much traction yet. So BAC is certainly steadily increasing in popularity in terms of actual trading volume as well as interest from institutional investors at least according to even the ICEO. But there is more. Building further on their recent success, BAC is also activating other developments for their platform. They are rolling out a liquidity incentive program, but this is still pending CFTC approval according to theblockcrypto.com. Bact has also already launched options trading. The availability of options for Bitcoin in general has been unimpressive so far in the market, and Bact wants to improve on that as well with their options offering. And then there was an announcement of their cryptocurrency consumer app and merchants portal, which is expected in the first half of 2020. They will do this with their launch partner Starbucks and this effort will be part of building the payments network. Essentially it means making buying coffee with Bitcoin possible even though it will be off-chain. On the other hand, so are payments on Lightning Network. There is a caveat on this. A coffee purchased through Bex app would convert Bitcoin into fiat for the merchant, in this case Starbucks. So Starbucks would not be accepting Bitcoin themselves but just receiving the equivalent value of transacted Bitcoin in USD. But maybe even more exciting is their announcement of November 11th. In a Medium article and Twitter post, they announced their institution-grade custody solution, the Backed Digital Warehouse. This solution is aiming to solve the lack of confidence that regulators and financial institutions have in the secure custody of Bitcoin. At first it was only available to futures trading clients, but now they have opened it up to all institutions after receiving NYDFS approval. They describe themselves as a top-notch security and auditing infrastructure backed by a well-trusted and regulated entity, namely ICE, and having a 125 million insurance policy to seal the deal. Because BACT can offer a regulated, liquid, transparent trading environment, combined with a trusted custody infrastructure, they expect that this is the crucial key that opens the door finally for more institutional adoption and even eventually a Bitcoin ETF approval. So, putting it all together, far from being dead on arrival, BACT is even accelerating its activities and expansion. And sure enough, it might be destined to play a significant role in adoption by institutions, but also merchants and consumers, and more comfort for regulators. The increased use, increased trading and increased access by audiences should eventually have a positive impact on the price, at least theoretically, although certainly not immediately. Fact may however definitely contribute to the long-term progress. However, there are also still some roadblocks and challenges. Something that Andreas Antonopoulos also warns about is that too much Bitcoin locked up in financial institutions, such as backed or even an ETF, those institutions would have too much control over the future direction of Bitcoin, also in terms of development. This could lead to Bitcoin's original purpose as open, permissionless, borderless, censorship resistant and unconfiscatable means of payment to come under threat. If the back payments network is too successful, that means that each payment effectively triggers a sell of Bitcoin, which puts price under negative pressure. Ideally, merchants should eventually accept Bitcoin without selling it for fiat. For that to happen, obviously its volatility needs to be reduced to a minimum, something that BACT also recognizes. Of course, Bitcoin was originally never meant to be used within a custodial system, but on a trustless network. BACT, of course, is a completely centralized platform and part of the legacy financial system, something Bitcoin was supposed to live outside of. Tax regulations in the US and other countries currently still triggers a taxable event for capital gains on each Bitcoin spending, including small amounts like buying coffee, which are not exempt. This is also a hurdle on adoption for payments with Bitcoin, which will hopefully eventually be solved as well. It looks like ICE and consequently BACT have a lot of faith in the future of Bitcoin as investment vehicle as well as means of payment. And they also have confidence in playing a crucial role in bringing both to the next level. It gives at least myself as well an extra boost of confidence that Bitcoin indeed seems to have that bright future that many of us are anticipating. Smart money is definitely taking Bitcoin seriously. Of course, this is not investment advice at all and you should never invest more than you can afford to lose. 
You can now also watch the Backed for Dummies explainer video by Kevin that is displayed on the screen. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like, and if you want to see more episodes of this series, please subscribe to our channel for all updates. Looking forward to see you all back for the next episode for What's Up Bitcoin. Take care.